What's up YouTube? Chewy here again with Chewy Tech and today we're going to go over uh, some quick checks um, before you start your engine. Um, once you configured all your inputs and outputs, uh, go to the di diagnostic panel and just make sure that all your sensors are reading correctly. Uh, if it's a cold engine, your air temperature and uh, coolant temperature should read the same. Um, if it's plugged, not plugged in, they'll be they'll have these exclamation points right here. Uh, battery voltage should read correctly. Obviously, right now this ECU is not plugged in. Uh, you can check your injectors. These would be all green if they're plugged in. Um, and you can also go to the output page. Inputs and outputs. There you go. Go to your outputs and test each individual injector. You can get an annoyed light or you can just listen to the injector and make sure that they're all operating. Do the same for your ignition. Put a spark tester on the end of it and make sure that they're all sparking test your solenoids whatever your configuration is you can test it here on this page uh, and then another thing is TPS calibration this is where you would set the calibration at zero pedal you calibrate hit the pedal all the way to the floor and calibrate it and this tells the ECU what voltage is idle and what voltage is full throttle if this reads opposite if closed pedal reads close to five volts and open pedal reads close to one volts and you, you can calibrate it that way um, usually I just rewire the TPS it's just been wired incorrectly and then uh, ignition calibration is another one that's really important this you set to whatever ignition timing you want to run and you should see you know if you're commanding 36 degrees of timing on this custom setting or 20 degrees you should see that on the balancer with a timing light and you would adjust these numbers up or down to achieve your ignition timing that you're commanding down here that's real important that you do that so once you get all that set up then right now I'm gonna go over go straight into how to tune you know once you, the engines up and running how to tune the fuel map one of the biggest things on fuel tuning is that this the main fuel map needs to be tuned when the engines at operating temperature so in this example I just opened up the map from a data log that I have over here And once the once if you get the engine to operating temperature, hopefully it runs. If it doesn't, you can you can come over here and tune this live. You know, go to this wherever the dot is at on your fuel map, and it should be able to um, to fine tune this is just to get it up up and running. Once it's at normal operating temperature, you can tune this fuel map live. If if you have a data log from a run or somebody sends you a log you can always use the fuel table overlay and in this particular instance uh, I'm commanding 14 and a half target AFR right here in the green and this is my closed loop closed loop is an average of since I'm using two oxygen sensors in this instance it is averaging these two to arrive here and I usually pay attention to these two numbers and adjust the fuel map so in this case my closed loop correction is taking away or it's adding three percent so you can just hit the letter G and it'll go straight to that particular cell and if you want to get you know narrow with it you would add 103 is 3% and it would add 3% to that 
that particular cell. So you would go on and tune. If you're using a log, you would use this portion of it to adjust your fuel map, and then you just send to FT Manager. It'll apply the changes to you right here. And as far as ignition map, same thing, right? You can do this live. Tuning it while it's live and making adjustments right here. If you're on the dyno and you're trying to creep up on timing to see where it makes the most torque, this is where you would do it live. Um, if you've got a log and you're trying to make changes, you can use the overlay. Same thing, right? And it would show you exactly where you're at. In this case, we're at 29 degrees of timing, 29.3. So we're right in this little area right here. And if you have adders or subtractors in in the uh, ignition table, you'd see it here. So in this case, I think there's a little bit of timing we're pulling as the intake temp goes up. And here is your ignition for cranking. I typically typically keep these low about 10 degrees or less. It's easier on the starter for cranking. And as far as closed loop compensation, you know what you allow the ECU to compensate is going to be in this setting right here. Control limits. Upper limit is the max closed loop compensation. In this case, it's 10%. And the lower limit is negative 5%. So it'll pull 5% fuel or add 10%. And this is based off map. And I'm using bar in this instance here. And here's your main target table. Um, again, you can set your target to whatever fuel number you want to run. This is my, my target numbers that I'm using. If you want to rescale this table, you can always rescale it here to whatever your likings. Uh, this can generate a table for you. Set a minimum, maximum, and the incrementals. The max is 16, so. Let's say you're at 7,000, or you can do for 500 RPM. I'm sorry, 50 RPM. Take that back, 7,000, and that'll give you 14 cells. If you want to increase the cells, you can, you know, go up on your number and change it like that. So. Same thing for RPM. Go and do it on. I'm sorry, that was RPM. So this is for the map side of it. So, anyways, that's that's pretty much how you tune the fuel side of it. Once you get the, the main fuel table dialed in correctly at your normal operating temperature, then you can come in and make your compensation for when it for cold start. Um, air intake compensation you can tune this however you want this is one I tried here I'm gonna end up changing this back to just zeros for now but if you see a trend for your particular application as intake temp goes up you know the air density goes down and so typically you would pull fuel out of it um, right now in this in this application it doesn't really correlate um, and it could be due to the, some of the fuel evaporating, you know, and making it richer. So there's a lot of a lot of variables here. But in a nutshell, this is you would have a curve similar to this, probably not so steep. Um, but you can configure this up for your your particular engine. Uh, battery compensation that's important. This is basically your for your injectors. Uh, wherever you get your injectors from you can plug this data in and typically I like to once you have the curve set I like to shift the entire curve up or down so if you're a 16 volt system 
you know, I would shift this to where I have a zero right there. So there's no compensation being added to my normal operating voltage. Uh, since FuelTech is not a true V, B, E, uh, ECU, it's just a pulse width modulation. You know, whatever you ask for it here is what you're going to get. And these are your offsets, basically. Battery compensation, intake temp. Uh, as long as the curve for this is accurate, that's all that really matters. You can shift this up or down. The curve is what's more important than anything. Uh, engine start, you know, when you're cranking, prime pulse, when it first sees a crank signal, it should pulse some fuel in there. And post start enrichment, once the engine's up and running, this is the fuel that you would, additional fuel you would add in and taper off quickly to get the engine to be stable and, you know, come up to operating temp. You can change the time on this as well. Uh, fuel injection angle, this is something I'll go over later. This applies to all the ECUs, but um, this is when you want the end of injection to happen. And over here, just same thing, main ignition table. Tune it for your particular engine. Um, engine temperature compensation, air temperature compensation. This one's important, I would definitely Remove timing as temp goes up, especially for a boosted application. I would have that set up. Individual trims here. You guys monitoring EGTs. This is a good, good table here to adjust. And the same thing applies for. Um, let's say if you if you want to add individual fuel for your setup, you would add it down here. You can do it over RPM or MAP. I'll just show both of these for for this example. It's even got a time base as well. So it'd be right in here. And this would be over RPM and this would be over MAP. So you can use both, which I don't know why you would. And then the, it said I had a time base one. Excel enrichment. So there, there's the uh, basic settings for fuel map time base and the visual fuel. I'm not sure where that, where that's at. Maybe it's in here. Anyways, I'm not sure where the time based one's at. TPS prime battery voltage. No, I don't see it in there. It's strange. But, anyways, this is where you would adjust your individual cylinders. So, if you got any questions, Drop a comment down below. Uh, subscribe to the channel, please. Give it a thumbs up. And let me know what you think about these videos, if they're helpful. Um, if I'm missing something or if any of these terminologies don't make sense to you, drop a comment and let me know. Thanks.